Hi right, guys, and welcome to God Loves Kids. This is a Bible study of the March Through Proverbs, and this is day three, chapter three. Uh, we've been going through this uh, the last few days, and if you've missed some of it, go back and watch what you've already missed so you can uh, be caught up. Um, I prayed to the Lord, and he gave me uh, guidance to, to come and do this. It, I'd been hearing a whole lot about you know making sure that you cover the Proverbs every month, uh, at church and from different people, um, because wisdom is is the key to, to to success in this world, and God's wisdom is the best uh, wisdom that there is. So, what I'm trying to do is just go through the chapters and uh, give you some takeaways from everything I get. And I really appreciate you joining us. Let's start out with some prayer today. Heavenly Father, thank you for your guidance and your wisdom. Thank you for your love, and that it abounds. Thank you, Lord, for bringing people together to hear this message that want to be corrected with your wisdom, that want to find your mercy and your glory. Heavenly Father, we know that Jesus says where two or three are gathered together, he will be there also. So we'd like to welcome the Holy Spirit and pray for his guidance today as we seek your word. Lord, bring knowledge to what we say and what we find. Bring good soil that needs a seed and let that seed be firmly planted, Heavenly Father. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice, for pouring out your blood so that all of us can live and live forever in your grace. Lord, we ask understanding, eyes to see, ears to hear, and ability to do your will in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I'm going to read through chapter 3 of Proverbs in the New King James Version. I'd like you guys to follow along if you can. Uh, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will be added to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her, for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver, and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand, in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness, and her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge the depths were broken up, and clouds dropped down the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul, and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down, and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence, and will keep your foot from being caught. Do not withhold the good from those to whom it is due. When it is in the power of your hand to do so, do not say to your neighbor, Go Go and come back, and tomorrow I will give it, when you have it with you. Do not devise evil against your neighbor. 
for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Do not strive with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. Do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. But his secret counsel is with the upright. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the legacy of fools. So some of the things that I've uh, gotten reading over this and praying over it, it, it talks a little bit about uh, the law here at the beginning and, uh, and, and kind of goes back to the law over and over. And we know that Jesus came so that, you know, the law would pass away. Um, that we, uh, by believing in Christ are, are, are not seen guilty, but at the same time, the law points to your sin and, and Holy, Holy Spirit convicts. So while we're no longer under Moses law, uh, we're still guided by it. When you feel that hook of, uh, you know, something you've done has, has, has made you farther away from the Lord then you need to go back to the law and take take a look and find out what you've done and, and how to repent from it. Uh, in understanding the law, we can let God change us uh, to be more like Christ. Um, he was the only one able to follow the law uh, in in all parts of it, and and if he, uh, you know, if anybody else could, then he wouldn't have had to come out of heaven and and lay his life down for us. So. Um, that's why we should keep the law close to our heart. And if you can internalize it, then you can immediately identify where you're transgressing it uh, when that comes up in your life. Uh, you, you then need to like quickly repent, uh, and then you'll find favor in the sight of God and in the sight of man. Because people are watching you, Christian. People are watching you guys. And they, if you say, well, I, I, I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in the Lord then people are going to watch the way you react. And nobody's going to be perfect all the time because we all fall short. But at the same time, uh, if we quickly turn our back to the sin and, and do what's right, people are going to notice that too. Now, if we rely on our own knowledge, then we'll find God will chastise us. Um, and when we ask God why, then he points us back to the law. These are the things that he expects from every single one of us. Um, so we're bound uh, then to trust in the Lord because if we don't, then the chastisement will continue. Um, but once we trust in the Lord, he carries us through all these things. Now, it talks a little bit about giving your, your first fruits to God and the, uh, the 10% uh, that, that tithe is supposed to be. Well, I mean, if you think about it, uh, everything that we have is given by God anyway. And he owns it all. So when you have it, it's not yours, it's his. And because of this, we should be willing to give him the first part. Not just because he asks for it, but because then it allows him to bless the other 90% of, of what we have. And there will be increase. So don't forget to, to give that first part to God um, and, and honor him with it because he, he gave it to you. And when we find ourselves in like a bad way, we need to look to the Lord to find out how the, how we can further rely on him. We, we don't need to try to solve this stuff ourselves. First, we need to go to God with it. Um, he wants us to give ourselves to him fully. And I think I've said it before, but the, Solomon who wrote this uh, was the same king who had the two women come to him with uh, that baby. And each one said, that's my baby. And, uh, instead of, um, in, instead of ripping the baby in half, he was wise enough to tell them, you know, let's, let's cut the baby in half and, and give each one, uh, a part. And the real mother stepped up and said, no, no, we can't, you know, she would rather, uh, the baby live than to have him torn in two. And God's the same way. He wants you wholly and fully. He doesn't want half of you or a dead piece of you, he would rather you walk in your sin and be given over to the devil than, than, than take 
a part of you that is dead. He, and he would rather you find your way to, to true eternal life, to be reborn as his uh, son or his daughter, than to give you over dead to, to Satan. So he only lets us walk into temptation in order to bring us back to his divine way. So if you find yourself walking there and you realize it, which, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to convict you, then do what you, do what's necessary. Come back, man. Get get on the straight and narrow path. And at the same time, when you realize that the Lord is is chastised is chastising you, it, when you realize hard times are upon you, take a second to realize that it's God that's making it happen and get some joy that he regards you enough to to send these bad things your way so that you can have good uh, come out the other side of it when you're closer to him. Now, when it's talking about looking for the wisdom and, and who wisdom is, it always refers to wisdom as she, and, and it says that she has these rubies and these these uh, beautiful things and long lives in her hands. Um, it's because finding wisdom is truly a treasure. And when we've learned that it's how God works, then we become content with grace and not dependent on things of this world. And, and that's really important in life because you, you end up feeling you're lost or you're broken or something's missing. And, um, if once you just, once you rely on God with all things, then, then that part is taken away. Um, so with understanding God's wisdom, we receive longer, more fruitful lives, and we lose that hole that we feel that, you know, material things might fill, but they never do. We find peace, even in the midst of turmoil, even when everything is going wrong, we know that God's there with us. So not only can we be issued longer life, but in verse 18, wisdom is likened to a tree of life, like the one found in the garden. And uh, that's that's. God's a promise, you know, God's promise to eternal life. And who can argue that finding Jesus isn't true wisdom? He's going to give you a life that lasts forever. So look at all the things that God's already accomplished from creation to the love that he provides to the very breath we take. And he has a part in it for you. And if you keep your eyes on the things that, uh, that are sacred to him, that are, that are wise. If you never take your, your eyes off the paper that you're writing, uh, if you keep it sacred in your heart then his, uh, and his follow his will, you're going to find yourself safe, uh, unafraid, and at rest in this life. As well, uh, of course, is the life to come. Now, when bad things happen, know the Lord already knew that those things were going to happen. And guess what the best part is? He's got you. He knew those things were going to happen. Nothing surprises God. So when these terrible things come upon you and you're stumbling and you're, you know, squirrely and, and don't know what to do next, just know that there's a reason for the calamity. It's because he wants to be closer to you and you're going to get through it. Um, that's God's promise. Also, it talks about taking care of your neighbors and, and you need to take care of the, the people around you. I mean, it's your duty as a Christian to love your neighbor and your enemy. Excuse me. Now, if you can help physically or materially, then do and soon because there may not be time later. But at the same time, if you find yourself unable to physically help somebody that needs physical help or, or materially help somebody that needs some, some money or, or whatever, you can always go in prayer to the Lord and, and Lord moves mountains with faith. Guys, if you have faith that your prayer will be effective, God wants you to pray. He wants to hear from you. He wants to, he wants to have this communication. He wants you to read his word and take understanding from it and then bring him your petitions, bring him your, your questions and your wants and your needs and your desires. And those desires can be yours or they could be uh, somebody else's. And, you know, God will provide all things. He's Jehovah Jireh. That's the way he works. Now, we're all here for each other uh, in the body of Christ. So always lift up your brothers and sisters. Like in Matthew 25, 45, Jesus says how 
Uh, you care for the least of your brethren is how you take care of him. Uh, take that mentality when someone's asking for help. Realize that this could be Jesus Christ standing in front of you, and someday you're going to stand before him and give an account of your life. And if you're able to help somebody and you refuse out of, uh, out of you know, falling to your flesh or, or a, a hundred other reasons, if you're turning your back on that person, then you're returning you're turning your back on Christ. And, you know, people, he, Jesus says it, you know, depart from me for I never knew you. Well, how do you get to know God? Well, you get to know him by, by helping the body, by being part of his body. You will find more understanding in Christ by helping others and doing things for other people than you ever will in all the study that you can do. Uh, be God's body on earth, be his arms, be his, his legs, be his eyes, be his ears, go out and help folks do what Jesus did when he was here. And, and you'll find yourself at peace. You'll find yourself feeling closer to Christ. And that's what we're all after. Now, if someone's attacking you and it happens in life, bad things happen, bad people come along and and, and just remember that, that, you know, you're lost in sin too. And if it weren't for Christ, you'd be just as bad off as they are. And maybe by your actions, you, you can plant a seed inside them that will grow into something where, where they will be saved. But also remember that the Lord is controlling it. And he's the one that's going to determine the outcome. And Satan has to ask permission before he does anything to you. He has to ask permission from the king. So if this is happening, then it's God ordained and it's, it's something for you, uh, to, to be able to move closer to Christ. So give the battle to him. It's his, it's his battle anyway. And you're going to increase in your love and understanding. And remember, uh, God is just and vengeance belongs to him. He can do it better than you anyway. Things will happen to move that person closer to God, too. And uh, Lord willing, he will cry out to the Lord for forgiveness and repentance. And you will be able to see that, if not here, then in heaven. Now, if you can act on this wisdom, then you get glory. And glory belongs to the Father, okay? And it's going to be given to you. And those that forsake God, they're going to be left with nothing but shame in the long run. So it's a much better thing to receive glory from God, who who glory belongs to, than than to be shamed uh, for not reaching out to the Lord, for not trusting in Him and acting on your own will, and and separating yourself from God doing so. Remember, we had to seek Him first, seek the kingdom first, even when it comes to people uh, doing terrible things in your life. Uh, remember, God's going to control it. God's got the outcome, and, and it's his battle. So that's what I got from Proverbs chapter 3. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me uh, for March Through Proverbs. Uh, if you liked what you heard, please share this with your friends. Uh, remember to help the ministry here at God Loves Kids by subscribing to our YouTube page at GOK TV. Uh, just go on to YouTube and search GOK TV, all uh, one set of letters, no spaces. And if you have any questions about this Bible study or how you can help God Loves Kids with our international mission uh, to help the neediest children in the world, just hit me up in the comments below. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next time as we cover chapter four. Love everyone you can. Amen. I'm Randy Capes with God Loves Kids.